So welcome everybody. Welcome to a new human experience podcast. The topic for this evening is navigating the slipstream. So why the slipstream is that recently, I don't know if you are all aware that there has been a new set of energies that um, started coming to earth to, to everybody, it affects everyone. And this energy is, um, it's kind of like a multiplier. So if you're in a good mood, this energy will make you feel um, 10, 50 times, or maybe even more, maybe even 500 times happier and all that. However, if you are not in a good place in life, it will actually, um, kind of suck you in and 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 pull you down even stronger so that's why i call this um slipstream kind of energy because it's is this spiraling effect that if you if it's good it will be very good it will really push you into many times better and if if you're in a low mood it would really suck you in and it's very hard for you to um, get out of that mood so that's why i thought i would talk a little bit about my experience of this energy and to share some observations and to share some um, suggestions on how best to really make use of this kind of energy because this energy is not it's not here randomly. It, it's actually an energy that is going to be with us um, for the next at least 20, 24, 25 years. So it's going to be around for a while. It's not something that is just going to be here for you know, a little bit, and then we'll move on to other things. This energy started coming um, maybe about a, a week ago, um, a little less than a week ago. And it's, it's kind of coming bit by bit. At first, it's just a drip, a drop, and it will increase and become more and more steady until 2024. In, in another two years time, it'll, two, three years time, it'll be here very consistently by the year 2024. So we have to learn to navigate and make use of this kind of energy. The most noticeable um, shift that I notice is that you get whatever you focus on in your mind very quickly. So whatever you focus on, it will, it will just come. It will that opportunity, that synchronicity is going to, to come in front of you and very quickly. So for example, um, I just want to give you an example how, how I experienced this is that a couple of weeks ago, um, beginning of, of, of November, I started um, going to a meditation group that is in person with a, a group of people, new group of people. I haven't, I like really new people that I haven't met before. So I started going maybe around the beginning of November. And a friend of mine actually um, goes to that group fairly regularly. And I started going because I really would like it's been so long that I've been meditating with groups of people on zoom and it's really not easy to to find a group that meets in person to meditate so that's why I, I, I jumped at that opportunity and um, the so after maybe about two or three times I've been there I was kind of feeling a little uncomfortable with the format because um, for myself I've been meditating for so long I just you know for me it's very simple I just make a find a time and I just um, find a um, 
relatively quiet spot and I just started meditating. But not this this group. This group does the whole whole nine yards. They would sing, they would dance, they would do a lot of things before and after the meditation. So the meditation itself is, is it's at most 15 to 20 minutes, but the whole event is like two hours long. And I was like, oh geez, I mean these people are uh, you know pleasant enough people but there is so much um sing song is there's so much bells and whistle whereas the meditation time is for me relatively short because because usually i would meditate for about an like 45 minutes to an hour or sometimes longer depending on the day so i'm i'm kind of feeling a little iffy about the group so and um so what happened was, it uh, after maybe about three, the third and the fourth time, I started feeling the energy of the group was just, it, there seems to be a shift. I think it was maybe around um, December time, just, just or end of November, beginning of December time, where the, the, the energy of the group is just sh starting to shift. Not that um, they are bad or anything. It's just that I felt the energy in the room because uh, I'm sensitive to energy. I felt pins and needles. So, so that tells me that the um, the the organizer really don't um, take too much effort in setting the room because if, even uh, um, like somebody who is organizing a meditation first thing is really to clear the room of any any of these um interfering energies for example if you have if you've been to any of um franco or sifu james or any i would say any um one who is worth the salt in, in in terms of knowing energy they would know that they need to set the energy of the room um to to be supportive of whatever it is that they're doing and so i find that oh okay these people haven't done that either that or that that particular day the everybody in the group was just in such a turmoil underneath that um, I actually felt it like when I was moving around the room while we were doing the dancing, I just felt pins and needles when I when I um, put up my hand like I can feel that above and it's like, okay, this is not good. So so what I did internally was I just call for protection. And I think after that the, I was able to um, settle down to to meditate, and what happened was the um, for that rest of that evening, like it, it was just within the span of two hours. It's like the I can feel the group dynamics just started to dis kind of disintegrate quite a bit from the beginning where everybody was kind of nice. To each other and then at the end of the evening by the time i got home it was like people are uh, uh, really feeling disconnected i can just feel the disconnection and so i was internally i was thinking oh, okay i'm not sure if i want to go back to that um meditation anymore because um i I'm, I'm just not sure about this group to continue on this group and but then I was I was trying to um, rationalize myself. It's like, well, you want to give them at least one more chance to to just to to see whether things improve or not. But um, as it turns out, though, um, since that time, um, the 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 group just kind of um, just didn't really come together again. The friend who brought me into the group was actually not planning to go um, either that for for various reasons because they they changed the location of the meditation and she was she has other things comes up so 
so since then it was like one thing or another there was just the so the energy of going back to that meditation was just not happening so that was my experience of that um what i got from all this experience is that in this energy if something works like if you if you really want something you visualize something then it's going to come very quickly but once you have any doubt once the the intention your intention is if your intention is not clear if your intention is not aligned with the intention of the rest of the people then things just comes apart very easily so that's one example um so another example that i want to give is that um so this example was that earlier this week i had a, a long talk with lucy um, we've been good friends for such a long time and i really missed her she's in costa rica now so um earlier this week we had a chance to really had a long good long talk and it was we had such a great time we were laughing and all of that and then afterwards after i had this you know really good um connection with lucy over the the phone again i just felt i i kind of felt lonely it's like oh she's all so far away in in costa rica it's such a beautiful environment whereas i'm here it's getting cold everything is like like it's so i was in kind of a bit of a downward um spin myself is and of course once i have this this um thought that okay i'm i'm feeling sorry for myself of course it didn't take long for the universe to bring me even more opportunities to to feel um sorry for myself and feel lonely and all that and i was like wait a minute what the heck is going on so i have enough awareness to know that okay i'm in a downward spiral and i need to get shift myself out of that so i really just um took a moment to meditate on on why it is that these things are all of a sudden happening and i just shifted my own mindset and that was and and i shifted out of feeling sorry for myself and just as quickly as i shifted everything just kind of subsided and and got better it, it was like pretty much instantaneously things just got better so that's that's really um my ex- experience of the energies and and i'm not just basing on my experience because hey maybe um i'm just maybe it's just me but i actually heard about similar experiences from well from talking to lucy and from talking to other of my friends as well that they are having some like, similar kind of experience where when when um things don't align it just comes apart so very easily so um so i just want to share a few of my observations that after giving all these examples so um the first ex- first observation is that you get what you focus on very fast very quickly in this energy we always get what we focus on that's even before this energy um comes we always get we focus on however it used to take much longer it used to take days if not weeks or months or even years before we actually um can can materialize what we what it is that we that we focus on however in this energy though it does not take long it like at most it may take a day but usually it takes like an hour or even a couple of hours you would you you really get 
what you focused on very quickly now. So it's it's not that we get what we focus on. It's the speed of what of us getting what we focus on. I think it's that is the um, the most noticeable quality of this energy. And the second observations about this energy is that it's very important to know what you want and align with what you want. Aligning meaning that, um, let's say if you want, if you want to be happy and then really focus on being happy. So envisioning yourself to, to be in a happy spot and also align with, with a group of people that are also um, wanting the same thing as you. So alignment has to be, it's, it's very important now, which means intention. Intention is very important now. So you have to be really, you have to be very intentional to align yourself and also surround yourself <clears throat> with people that are also aligned with what it is that you want. And the third observation is that this energy is here really to facilitate us to see what it is that is going on inside because a lot of the times we may not be aware of our own intentions because we may have um, some rather unconscious intentions that's lurking in the background and in, 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 in the old energy it may take a long time for us to um, really figure out what those unconscious intentions may be however in this energy it's the energy is here to facilitate us to see because whatever it is that we see outside is a reflection of what's inside. So it is here to assist us to really focus and develop our own consciousness, consciousness very quickly and to move us into integrating the fifth dimension um, consciousness much quicker than we would have otherwise in an older and slower energy. So I really want to um, kind of mention that our, our model of reality and what we think of as being real has really been compromised and and um we really have we don't really understand what the model of reality really is the way that we think of reality right now is actually not natural it's been so manipulated from the language that we use from everything it is all been has all been um, manipulated so the that's why this energy is here specifically during this time frame when that's what we are here to do now um, we are here to fully integrate the fifth dimension consciousness within so we have to shift that from from being third dimension consciousness, we are really shifting and, and moving into fifth dimension consciousness. And the best way to assist us is to give us this, this feedback loop so that we can see what's not working in our own thinking. And when we can see, when we can um, really associate our own intention to um, the results that we get, then we can course correct much faster and much easier. Whereas before we 
it may take like 10 times longer for us to to really um, you know, see the results of our own thinking. And because of that delay in time, it was necessary to delay that in the old energy when we you know, don't know what um, we are actually capable of. And because in the old energy, we, we have no idea what we are actually capable of. We didn't know that if we think of something, we actually create that reality for ourselves. And so that's why the, um, the intention and the results, the creation process has been slowed down in the slow motion, it's so slow. And because it's so slow, it is there um, positively is to make sure that we don't um, create something that is so horrible for ourselves that it, it may end our life even before we actually um, manage to, to grow and experience what and, and to do anything in terms of growing our own consciousness. However, it's exactly because of this slowing down of the creation process that it actually confused us that we don't get to pinpoint and understand that we actually can create. So we don't know that we can create because this, this is so drawn out that we don't see the correlation between our intention to create versus the results. And all that now is coming to an end. This new energy is so potent that whatever we focus on, whatever the intention we hold, we don't have to hold it long anymore. It facilitates us to see intention. So our intention to create, and we get to see the results. And when we get to see the results, then we can actually slow down and say, hey, this is not the result that I want. So I, so then we go back and analyze, okay, so how did I create this? And then, and then once we shift what it is that we um, miscreated, then we can actually recreate again to shift and then see the results and then, and then shift and see the results. So this is why this energy is here, is to assist us to, so that we can make that shift to let go of all of the things, all the miscreation or the misunderstanding that we have um, adopted and, and become so so used to and taking as being reality in the third dimension, it assists us to really shift to the fifth dimension with this quickening of, and also the um, really showing us the creation process. So that is what this energy is here to do. So, Next is so how do we how do we make sure that we don't um, do something because we are so so still bound and and um, we still quite unaware of our three D kind of thinking. So how do we navigate this kind of energy, this slipstream like kind of energy? So how do we do it? I have a few suggestions and, um, and if you have suggestions of your own, I'll be happy to, um, we can be happy to, to hear those afterwards. But what I can think of now is a few. First thing is really, it's important to raise your own consciousness now. So it is not, the more you go on autopilot, the harder it is going to be for you. Because when you're on autopilot, you are kind of asleep. You let your old thinking 
mode um, be your motivation. And the, the idea now is that we need to course correct. We need to shift out of the 3D thinking that we've been programmed into. So that's why the best tool is to raise your own consciousness by making every choice in your daily life consciously. So no more um, autopilot. Don't go on autopilot. So always remind yourself, okay, be, be awake now. Whatever, whenever you do something, you really have to ask yourself, is this really what I want to do in this moment? Or am I just doing this because of the force of habit? So ask yourself this question as often during the day as possible. And this question can be something along the line of, is this what I really want to do, think, belief, or be right now? So ask yourself this. And I would actually suggest that you, for initially when you um, start to train yourself to become more conscious, is to set an alarm clock, an alarm clock. Um, maybe set it for three or four hours, depending on, on how busy your day is. If it's, if it's possible, um, have it at least three hours, every three hours during the day set the alarm off so that when the alarm off uh, goes off, then you ask yourself, is this what I really want to be doing right now? Is this really what I want to be focusing on thinking? Is this really what I want? Is this belief really what I want to be still believe right now? Or is who I am, who I be, what I actually want to be right now? So raising your own consciousness, making every choice, making sure that whenever you make a choice, because we make choices all the time, we make choice of when to get up, we like, whether we're going to brush our teeth or not, and what we want for breakfast, where we want to have breakfast, who we want to have breakfast with, all these little things during the day. Make sure that you are actually consciously making a choice rather than just going on autopilot. So that's the, um, one of the most important thing that I would highly suggest you adopt is to raise, do whatever you can to make sure that each choice <clears throat> in each thought that you take on, that you focus on, in this kind of energy is something that you actually choose to focus on. Because um, the more you go on autopilot, the, the longer it's going to take you to shift out of 3D and into fifth dimension. So fifth dimension is really about remembering that you are eternal source and that you are the creator of your life. We are so not um, living the idea that we are the creator of our life. We, we are all conditioned that someone else is, is holding our power. So this is one way of starting to take back your power is to become more conscious, raise your own consciousness that is really one of the most powerful thing you can do is to start getting yourself off autopilot. So that is one, um, my, my, I, would, I would say my most important suggestion. And the next suggestion is, is to always have a vision an in, or an intention of what you want to experience either that minute or that day or that week or that month or that year and that life. 
So have an intention of what you want to experience. So not just to ask yourself, is this what I want to be doing? But also have a vision of how you want your life to look like, feel like, and how you, you want to experience that life. And do it at least um, start by the day. So in the morning before you get out of bed, just set an intention for that day. I want to, let's say, um, I want to have, I want to, this morning, I want to create the, the best podcast that I can possibly do for this evening. So it's all that. Set an intention for the day. And when you got... And when you're in the, the, the habit of setting the intention of the day, then you start to think more long term. What do I want to, um, how do I want my month to be like? How do I want to feel at the end of December? By the end of December 31st, you know, and just before midnight, how do I want to feel? What do I, where do I want to be? Who do I want to be with? How do I want to experience life? So set an intention. Not, no guarantee that you will have everything that you intend to have. But if you don't set the intention, then you wouldn't know what action to take or not to take in order for you to bring about that whatever it is that you envision so first is to set an intention a vision have a vision and then of course the next thing is take action towards your vision it does not have to be grand gesture you don't have to you know work 24 hours on it but just decide to have one to to adopt one new um to have just one new habit during the day that is going to support you to get what you envision so just little things but take action and the other thing that i um i want to suggest is always act whatever it is that you envision whatever it is that you you do is to do in love in love for yourself and also love for everyone else so start to practice and this is living in your heart living in in love even when you're freaking out and or especially when you're freaking out is to remember to go into your heart and to just be compassionate for yourself even when you're freaking out oh i'm freaking out now so instead of judging yourself and feeling the guilt and all that is to just well you know what it's been a really tough day so give yourself that compassion as if you choose to freak out in that moment, this is what I needed to do right now is to freak out. So choose that and don't, um, don't wallow in guilt afterwards. Give your compassion, compassion towards yourself and for other people as well. Live in your heart as much as you can. And when you do get triggered or get um, or experience something that you would much rather not be experiencing, then handle it right away. Don't wait. Don't try to rationalize it away. Don't try to wait. Well, I'm going to wait a week or two and see what happens. No, handle it right away now in this energy, because if you, this energy really, um, 
it magnifies everything. So if you get triggered, if you have an experience that you don't enjoy having, then do something about it right away. Like, it's, it's like if you're having an experience that you don't like, then stop right then and there and look at why. And look at why it is and um, why you are triggered by that. It's just, um, for example, I was feeling sorry for myself and I needed to shift out of that because if I don't shift out of that um, soon enough, then I'm that, that kind of feeling sorry for myself, that kind of energy is going to attract and creates more synchronistic experiences for me to feel even more sorry for myself. So feeling sorry for myself is really not something that I want to hang on to for too long. So whatever it is that, that you got triggered about, don't hang on to it. Hand do it right away. Look at why. One of the questions that shifted me out of feeling sorry for myself is really asking myself the question of, so I feel sorry for myself. I feel so lonely. So who, who it is that feels lonely? Of course, it's not the, it's not the true self. It is the ego part of me that feels that. So that really tells me all I needed to know. Oh, this, this emotion, this, this is coming from the egoic part of me, the part of me that really specializes in making me feel disconnected. So when I really realize that I am really um, seeing life, seeing how my life is from the point of view of my ego, and I just choose not to do it. I choose to feel it from the point of view the, of my bigger self, where I know that I'm always connected, that I'm never alone. So that really helped me to shift out of that um, mentality very quickly. So handle, handle whatever it is that triggers you right away look don't um don't try to stew in anything that is negative for too long in this energy and last but not least is really to to remember that everything this energy is actually here to assist you so whatever bad experience whatever triggers you everything is really happening for you it's not here to punish you it's happening for you so very important thing to remember is that all this energy is here to assist you to see what actually is lurking underneath that you're unconscious that you're not aware of so that's why it's very easy to to um like if you're not in the right frame of mind you will feel it you will feel the results you will get um the the you will get kind of beaten around so easily it's not here to punish you though it's here to show you that hello miss winnie this is what's going on inside this is how the 3d mind works in order to undermine you so you have a choice now you can choose to shift out of that or you can choose to keep it but it is not going to go away so it is really Everything is here for you. So make use of this energy to make that mind shift, to start to really let go of the 
all the habits or the mental habits that we have adopted that we we're not even consciously aware that oh i'm always taking the side of my ego i didn't i was not aware of that so next time when i feel this loneliness or feeling sorry for myself i will remember hello i'm in i'm looking at life from my ego's point of view now so what do you want to do so that's that's really is to know that all this is really happening for us it's not here to punish us and one more thing i want to mention is that yes we are compassionate people we want to help others and in this in this kind of energy you may notice that there are people around you that is going to suffer and they are going to really suffer much faster than before and we are compassionate people so if you see someone else struggling share how you um were able to get yourself out of a similar situation if you have something like that to share and if they are willing to listen then share more however if they are not willing to listen if they um you know if they don't see it your way then let them be you cannot carry someone else into fifth dimension you cannot make someone change their mind it is not possible you can try but it's not possible 5d this fifth dimension consciousness this taking back of our own creative power that becoming um sovereign really spiritually becoming our own sovereign being taking responsibility for all our own thoughts for all our own creation that's not a state of consciousness that you can force or will on someone else they have to choose it for themselves all you can do is share how you handle that situation you can share but it's really up to someone else to get curious and to take on their own journey of starting to shift away from their own habitual frame of mind it is not for you to drag someone into fifth dimension so have compassion for their journey and respect their free will to listen or not listen to you as well so that's all i have to share for this evening